If you haven't been on TikTok in the last 24 or 48 hours, you may not have known that the TikTok CEO, Sho Chu, was grilled by Congress on March 24th for about four hours in regards to the data and privacy issues and concerns here in America. Hi everyone, it's Sho here. I'm the CEO of TikTok. I'm here in Washington DC today and uh, I have some news and updates to share with everyone here. Today, I'm super excited to announce that more than 150 million Americans are on TikTok. That's almost half of the US coming to TikTok to connect, to create, to share, to learn, or just to have some fun. This includes 5 million businesses that use TikTok to reach the customers. And the majority of these are small and medium businesses. Now these numbers are amazing. And I'm so thankful to all of you and the 7,000 TikTok employees in the US who are helping us build this incredible community in America and around the world. Now this comes at a pivotal moment for us. Some politicians have started talking about banning TikTok. Now this could take TikTok away from all 150 million of you. I'll be testifying before Congress later this week to share all that we're doing to protect Americans using the app and deliver on our mission to inspire creativity and to bring joy. Now before I jump into how that hearing went and truly how Sho Chu was able to combat a ton of our fellow Congress members here in the United States, I'm gonna give you guys a little backstory of what TikTok means to me. Now, first and foremost, I am a small business owner. I own a real estate company here in Dallas, Texas, and I've recently been licensed in the state of Florida as well. However, TikTok was really not utilized for the most part for my small business. Instead, back in 2020, when really the whole world shut down for all of us, I used TikTok more as a platform to really express myself, to be able to get myself out there and not really use it for business. Because if I'm being honest with you guys, my entire life revolves around my business. So to have an app that really pulls me away from my business, gives me a little bit of comedic relief, allows me to express myself and not feel like I'm working was something kind and nice and enjoyable back in 2020. But then it took off. I started to grow a decent following. I actually talked a lot about dating, the struggles in dating in our culture today. And I've actually dated a handful of individuals from the app itself. It's been an app that I've been able to use on a daily basis to really get out a lot of frustrations. Now, in addition to that, I've met a ton of great individuals off of TikTok. I've also had the opportunity to meet a few small business owners that really TikTok is the sole reason that their business is even successful. Now, as Shou Chu mentioned, there's over 5 million small and medium business owners on TikTok. And I can tell you there will be a huge ripple effect in terms of our economy and the small business owners that have had and used TikTok solely for their success if TikTok winds up being banned. Now, if you are someone that consumes a lot of TikTok, you have probably started to follow some folks that you like. It may be just an influencer, it may be a small business owner, or it could even be an artist. And I can tell you myself, Keith Lee out of Las Vegas, Nevada is one of my favorite TikTokers. He's an individual that does a ton of food reviews. I travel to Vegas often, and a lot of the food reviews that he has done locally in Las Vegas, I've actually had the opportunity to indulge in because I follow him on TikTok. And on top of that, TikTok is a huge platform for musicians. I can't even begin to explain how many artists that I found on TikTok, similar to the days back you know, when we had MySpace where we were able to find a ton of artists that we never really heard of. TikTok is very much the same opportunity for a lot of younger or newer artists that really haven't had the opportunity to get themselves out there. TikTok has been a platform that has given so many people an opportunity to really present themselves, be creative, and get themselves out of the current situation that they may be in life. Keith Lee, as a prime example, without TikTok, very much was so close to being homeless. And I could go on for days, the different influencers that I follow, the different musicians that I follow, and the different TikTok channels and small business owners that I have supported, including myself. I've had a handful of folks that have reached out. Even though my TikTok isn't directly what I correlate with myself when it comes to business, I still have a substantial amount of people that follow me from TikTok over to Instagram, reach out to me on Instagram and actually wind up either using me as a real estate agent or having me connect with someone in their local market. Now, if you are someone that doesn't really use TikTok, doesn't really understand the impact that it's gonna have on endless amounts of small business owners, just read some of the comments on Show Chu's TikTok that he made prior to going to the hearing and you'll see how big of an impact that TikTok has had on a majority of its users. 
The main concern with the US and TikTok is national security and privacy. TikTok is owned by a Chinese company called ByteDance, which has raised concerns among US government officials that the app may actually be providing sensitive data to the Chinese government. Folks that are in their teens or even younger individuals than that, I know a handful of folks that create TikToks that are not even teenagers and they have a substantial following. So that's really where the US concerns lie is national security and privacy as well as protecting our youth. So throughout the hearing yesterday, Sho Chu was actually detailing a firewall and really what TikTok moving forward is going to do to combat those issues that the US has. Hey guys, it's Sho here. As you know, I just testified before Congress and I wanted to share my thoughts about the experience with you. A lot was said at the hearing, but I hope you heard the message, the important message, that it is our responsibility to protect more than 150 million Americans who love and use our platform. Now, this is why I'm making the following commitments to you. Number one, we will continue to keep safety, especially for teenagers, a top priority. Second, we will continue to protect your data from unauthorized foreign access. Now in the US, American data will be stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel. Third, we will ensure that TikTok remains a platform for free expression and that it cannot be manipulated by any government. And fourth, we will be transparent and give access to third-party independent monitors to keep us accountable for our commitments. Now we know that trust is built with every decision we make. We are proud of the groundbreaking work we are doing to be the most trusted platform in the world. Being 33 years old, I've really been around for the entirety of the social media age, starting back when I was a teenager, really understanding what cyberbullying was on MySpace and living through it firsthand all the way through not being able to sign up for Facebook because I was in the Marine Corps and not in a college. Back in the day, you couldn't even have a Facebook unless you were specifically in college. Then going on to Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, even really the day of Vine. I've been through it all and I've seen what competition can really do. So really with competition and the introduction of TikTok just a few years ago, I can see that it's certainly healthy. Now, if you are the CEO of Facebook or Instagram, you may not love the competition, but for the most part, competition in your own general space can be healthy and helpful. Now, for example, in my profession, if I was in a large city and I was the only real estate agent that operated in that large city, I would have a ton of business and I would just be busy 24 seven, but I really wouldn't have any opportunity to better myself because I get all the business anyways. Now, if you started to introduce a second or a third or maybe 20, 40, 60 other agents, I'm gonna lose some business. Now that lost business is probably because I didn't do well enough for those clients to retain those clients that they felt their need was better suited by another real estate agent. Now those other real estate agents are going to be competition for me to really push my business forward and allow myself to not just be a real estate agent that services everyone, but be a better real estate agent that services a portion of people. Now on the flip side, competition can be very nasty as well. Now, as you're aware, a lot of these social media platforms have a ton of money backing them. Now, if you have a ton of money in marketing backing in you, you probably have some influence to potentially bring a ban to TikTok. Now, this is not making any accusations, but there has been a strong assumption that other social media platforms certainly don't love the huge influx that TikTok has had. Now, if you didn't see any of the highlights from the hearing yesterday, I'm gonna clip up some of these for you to get a better understanding of how out of tune our local Congress members in the United States are when it comes to social media and technology. Mr. Chu, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? Only if the user turns on the Wi-Fi. I, I'm sorry, I may not understand the So if I have a TikTok app on my phone and my phone is on my home Wi-Fi network, does TikTok access that network? You will have to, to access the network to get connections to the internet, if, if that's the question. Can you say with 100% certainty that TikTok does not use the phone's camera to determine whether the content that elicits a pupil dilation should be amplified by the algorithm? Can you tell me that? We do not collect body, face, or voice data to identify our users. We do not. The, the, the that, only but you, you don't? The, no. The only face data that you get, that we collect, is when you use the filters to have, say, sunglasses on your face, we need to know where your eyes are. And Why that, do you need it, to know what the eyes are and, if you're not seeing if they're dilated? And, and that data is stored on your local device and deleted after use if you use it for facial. Again, we do not collect body, face, or voice data to identify our users. So, Mr. Chu, would TikTok be prepared to divest from ByteDance and 
uh, Chinese Communist Party ties if the Department of Treasury instructed you all to do so? Congressman, I said in my opening statement, I think we are need to address the problem of privacy. I agree with you. I don't think ownership is the issue here. With a lot of respect, American social companies don't have a good track record with data privacy and user security. I mean, look at Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. Just one example. So uh, again, here's, here, here's the main point of concern. China's 2017 national intelligence law states very clearly that, quote, any organization or citizen shall support, assist, and cooperate with state intelligence work in accordance with the law and maintain the secrecy of all knowledge of state intelligence work. Con Congressman, first, I'm, I'm Singaporean. So yes, there are many layers that have brought us to this point, to where Shochu had to stand in front of Congress for over four hours and detail why TikTok can be a safe place for us in the United States. Now, this is certainly not denying or discrediting any of the security or privacy issues. Obviously, as an American, we do not want any of our information being given to the Chinese government, but I certainly think there is a much better route, and it looks like Shochu is certainly doing it, than just outright banning TikTok. Would love to know what your guys' thoughts are. Make sure to leave a comment down in the comment section below if you have any opinion on this whatsoever. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really does help, and stay tuned for the next video.